guys feel that was successful today, though? Yeah. As far as the gap we needed tonight? Case number 09-38937. I'm Detective Marino, ID 696 with the Boynton Beach Police Department. Detective Anderson, ID 630. All right, also present in the room right now is Mr. Uh, Michael DePillo. Can you go ahead and spell your last name? Uh, D-I-P-P-O-L-I-T-O. And your first name is Michael? Michael. Okay, and your date of birth? 12-18-1970. Uh, okay. Um, you already know why we're here. Yes. References holding something that's happened in an investigation where uh, your wife hired somebody to kill you. Yeah. Um, yeah, before we get started, my go ahead and raise your right hand. You swear and affirm that the statement you're about to give us is true, so help you God. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Um, you've already experienced the whole situation how we, you know, your wife came in here. Um, yeah, go ahead. And explain to us. Take us back to how you met her. We'll start there. Yeah. Uh, okay. And where, where, where did you all meet and how long ago? I met my I met my wife. First uh, of all, what's her name? Uh, Dahlia. Dahlia Muhammad is her original maiden name. Okay. Now her name is Dahlia DiPolito. Um, we met, I believe, in October. And she's actually an escort. That's how I met her. She came to my office one day. You called her and I solicited? I called her and solicited her to the office, and she came to the office. What year is this? This was nine, well, one year behind this year, so that's uh, 08. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're on 08 of October. And uh, after that one time, we started dating, and uh, she lived in California at the time, so she moved home and immediately moved in with me. And Pretty much, we were on a fast track relationship, getting along great, everything's great, you know, and uh, as soon as we, we moved out of Boca in January and I purchased a home in Boynton, and I would say two weeks after we did that, uh, I, I hired a lawyer to get off of probation. Um, I started giving my wife money because she was going to provide me with the other half of the money for the probation. And uh, just for record, what yeah. were you on probation for? Just for a um, organized fraud. Okay. Basically, we were trading commodities that didn't exist. All right, that's enough of that. Then. And, and then uh, I provided her with a hundred thousand dollars. She was supposed to provide me with ninety thousand. And my lawyer is telling me it's not here, it's not there. She was supposed to send a wire. The wire magically never showed up, and, and the story was just unbelievable, and, you know, what do I do with that? And then I turned around, and I was going to leave, and then she got honest that she messed my money up in some wire scheme where she was supposed to send it and make money on it. And so, so how long did you date before you actually got married? We dated from October to January. Okay. So however long that would be exactly, two, three months, three right. months. So that's pretty quick. So you get married, and then how long after you get married do you start, or do you ever feel that something's not right with her? About a month and a half, 
right away. The money starts disappearing. Uh, I had drugs planted on my truck. The officers came out to search my truck. I'm not a drug dealer. I never was. Where, where did that happen? Huh? Uh, the Ritz Carlton in Manalapan. I, I came out one day and we were leaving in the morning and officer approached me, is this your truck? I said, yes it is. And, and I didn't know what he wanted. He goes, can I search it? There's been activity on it. Someone called and I'm like, absolutely you can search it. The officer searches the truck. There's nothing in the truck. He lets me leave. Um, I figured someone called, but nobody knew we were there. It's an unexplainable thing. Were any drugs found? The next day, I went to get gasoline in the truck. There was drugs in my gas cap. So luckily, you had no knowledge of that. No, no. I mean, thank God, you know, I let the officer search the truck. There's nothing in the truck. Thank God I didn't find them because you know that would have been a disaster. Um, point being, though, it was unexplainable. Nobody knew we were there. Nobody knew we were there. Somebody suspected, planted it. <laughs> A hunch. A hunch was my wife. Okay. And I played it through my head a thousand ways. I thought, it, could it be? I'm laughing. I even thought maybe it wasn't me who put it there. You know, I didn't remember. But I don't, you know, the point is, nobody knew we were there. Nobody had access to my vehicle except so my what, wife. What would her motivation be for doing that? You're on probation at she, the time. Right? At that point, yes. And at that point, she already had stolen a hundred and some thousand dollars from me. And uh, so now I'm out $100,000, and she got me involved in another scheme to where I lost another ninety or another 100000 trying to, you know. I basically, I lost $240,000 with this girl. It's unexplainable money. Just stupid stories, one after the other. I'm the stupid one, you know, but the point is it's unexplainable. What other situations have you had to deal with before? Um, after that incident in Manalapan, we went to West Palm Beach to go have dinner at a city place. And this was about two weeks later. I come out to the truck again, and I see a bunch of cops standing there, and I laugh. I said, they're, yeah, they're here for us, as a joke. So I walk up to the truck, lo and behold, they approach me. And I'm like, I can't believe it. And uh, same routine, can we search the truck? I said, absolutely you can, you know. And, uh, they're looking, looking, they find a cigarette pack up under my spare tire and had a little bit of cocaine in it, they said. They let me go because, you know, I explained to them, look, man, of course you can search, whatever. And the reason they let us go is the phone call to the police station was that I had a kilo of cocaine under my spare tire. Mm -hmm. And like, and once again, we were driving down 95 that day and we were going home. And we're on 95 and Gateway. We were going home. And then last second, Oh, let's go to West Palm. We went to West Palm last second. Nobody again knew we were up in West Palm. Nobody knew where we were. And the only person that knew would be my wife. Again. You know, another unexplainable incident. And you've had other experiences after that, though? Or? One day I come out of the gym, there's a note on my car, leave $40,000 in a bag, don't tell your wife. You know, uh, my wife was getting these fake prank call supposedly from some detective Hurley, uh, rather, uh, just a, yeah, a handful of unexplained incidents. You know. Was there ever, I mean, earlier when we had you in here, you were talking about um, <coughs> drinking something and you thought it might have been poison? Did you, did you say that? No, I was actually, my mother, my mother knows about all this and she put her on it and says, because I take drug tests for probation. Okay. And my mom says, you better watch because you don't know if something's in there. Like, my mom accused her of putting something in my food. And I don't know about all that, but you, you understand. Everybody in, everybody around me knows about all this crazy shit. And they all know something was wrong. And I well, just... People have been saying stuff about it? Or? Everybody's been telling me about it. And uh, I lost basically two of my best friends over this. They want nothing to do with me because they know some bullshit's going. Something's wrong. My mother just doesn't say anything anymore, and uh, that's why today, honestly, I'm not very surprised or shocked about all this, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess fool me once, fool me twice, fool me three times, at this point, I, there's just there's nothing left to say. It's just ridiculous. I don't think uh, anybody in their regular life has this many unexplainable incidents, and I've had them in less than seven months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, yeah. this morning, what was that, oh, this morning when you woke up and she was at the house? Tell me about that. I've been laid up, hell surgery on my back for a week and a half, and this, you know, I go to the gym at 5 o'clock every day, I've been going five years or more, 
and I would say maybe two months ago, she all of a sudden wants to go with me. And, you know, as soon as she goes with me, you know, I get a note on the, on the car window, and she's with me. Like, it, you know, I've been going there forever without an incident. And for her to go to the gym with me is just ridiculous. She just never wanted to. I thought it was a little, little weird. I didn't think much of it. So all of a sudden, I'm laid up, and she says, today, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm not feeling good, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And, uh, you know, I didn't think much of it. I did think it was odd. But, you know, I had to kind of give her the benefit of the doubt, you know. Now, <laughs> today when she goes to the gym, when was the last time she went to the gym early in the morning, you know? Since she was with me two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Not just one time and then today? <clears throat> well, she was going for a couple weeks with me. But okay. she stopped. As soon as I stopped, she stopped. Okay. She you stopped with the surgery? I stopped because of the surgery. You know, I am the one that goes to the gym. She follows. Okay, so she so never goes to the gym by herself? No, never. Okay. And this is, today was the first time first she went First time she went by herself. Okay. Yeah. So. And then, um, did she say anything besides, I don't feel good, but I'm going to the gym, or anything that... No, nothing. It was, you know, I'm sitting there playing it in my head, and, uh... She told me she'd bring coffee back from Starbucks, and I have a really nice coffee maker, and I'm like, what? Like, I don't even, you know, just a little off-key, like, you know, for her, but nothing. She just left. What was that note, I'm sorry, what was that note on your car? What was that you said? Put $40,000 in a bag, don't tell your wife, I'll tell you everything, I'll help you. When you came out of the gym, there was a note on your car that said that? Yeah, I have a copy of it at the house. Who's handwriting? I don't even know. It didn't look like us? No, I have a police report with it. Okay, they took a police report. Alright. Just, you know, like I said, more than a handful of unexplainable incidents that, I mean, if you really, if I accuse everybody around me, the only one that ever made sense of it being was my wife. Alright. You know? Well, the reason that we're even here in this situation right now is because the investigation we've been conducting, she actually had hired someone to kill you, you know, like we explained to you earlier. Um, she didn't have no hesitation, you know, she's been recorded and everything else. It's, this investigation has been going on since uh, Friday night. Um, fortunately, you know, we ended up getting ourselves involved in, you know, preventing this from happening to you. Um, and you say it doesn't surprise you at all, huh? No. It's like a bad movie, you know. It really doesn't surprise me, you know. Not, I mean, like I said, I mean, I... I I haven't had this many incidents go wrong in my life, and, and you know, I mean, in my life, and that I've had since I've met this girl. Like, you know, I haven't had, you know, I haven't had my truck searched two, three times. You know, I don't do that kind of shit. You know, so all of this is very out of character for me. My life is since I met Dahlia, and since we've been married, um, the dynamics of my daily life have changed drastically. Like, I don't have police interaction anymore. I don't. You know, and I've seen the police more than like ten times probably since I've been with her mm -hmm. over stuff that's unexplainable and sounds crazy to people. I don't tell people my business anymore because they think I'm crazy. <laughs> Let me ask you one yeah. question here that's kind of puzzling or that we would like to answer it if we can. What's her motivation for having you killed? I mean, like, why not just get divorced? Or did she ever mention divorce or separation? And Never. So what, in your mind, what was, what, what's her motivation? Yeah, we just uh, purchased. We, no, we just purchased a home, and I just actually signed the title over to her until I could straighten out all my other problems with probation, and uh, also, you know, the two hundred and some thousand dollars she stole from me. I think is a big motivation. So basically, I guess with my home and everything else, a half a million dollars of uh, motivation. Was that money used <laughs> like restitution to pay back your victims? It was supposed to be for that. Yeah. Right. And she stole it. You have no proof, but you assume. No. Well, I, 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 she has checks in her bank account from my company, so. Okay. I mean, I, and you know the money. Actually, you want to laugh? I hired a really good lawyer. And we're at the lawyer's office, and this guy threw me out of his office because he's so disgusted. And he's actually, I guess, a witness in this because he sat with this. Uh, we were at the desk, and she had the check for $191,000 as a cashier's check. She wouldn't hand it to my lawyer. And my lawyer's looking at me, and she's coming up with some cockamamie story. You know, she wants my, her money first. You know, the point was I was done probation. 
I paid these people their money and she didn't hand it over. The lawyer says, I can't take the money from her if she's not willing to give it. So he throws me out. I have to run back now and get her money to give her her money that she supposedly put into this. So at any rate, we exchange money. I run back to my lawyer's office and I hand him the check. It was for $191. So the check magically changed from $191,000 to $191. My lawyer was a witness to this and uh, he chased me down the hall and basically threw me out of his office. He was disgusted mm -hmm. because he also warned me mm -hmm. something's wrong here. And so he fired me. So That's another sign, huh? Yeah. I mean, so he's a witness to that. Like, he saw the whole thing go down. He saw the real check. He saw the bad check. He saw, you know. Now that um, you found this about your wife, how do you feel? What do you want to do? Whatever she gets, she deserves. I mean, I'll, I'll do whatever Good. I have to do to help this case move along. Okay. I have to. So you want to prosecute yes. and follow through with this? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm willing to come down here again if we have to go over any other, other business or whatever. It's fine. Is there anything we haven't asked you that we need to know? No. Uh, we've, we've, we've pretty much covered it all, you know. Um, but like I said, I mean, since I've met Dahlia, you know, uh, I've had, you know, a handful of incidents that could just not be explained. And uh, that's why today, this one, I mean, you guys saw, I'm not overly surprised about it. Just, you know, this actually relieved me because uh, now everything makes sense. Good. I'm glad, Mike. Mm -hmm. I'm glad about that. No, yeah. well, you know, I'm sorry, sorry about everything, but your life was saved today. I mean, if you really think about that. Yeah, honestly, I'm not even grasping that yet. Like, yeah, I don't, you I'm not grasping a hold of the fact that someone was going to try and come do something to me. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know why, but, I'm, you know, it hasn't really, that part hasn't hit me yeah, yet. Yeah, it hit you yet. You know? <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have any other questions unless you have something else to say. No, that's, that's it, guys. Mm -hmm. Can you go ahead and raise your right hand? Yes. Do you swear what you told us is the truth and nothing but a truth out for that? Yes, I do. All right. The time right now is 7.35 a.m. The date still remains the same. This ends our, our interview. If you guys ever need me to come back down, I mean, I'll, I'll have no problem doing You know what's going to happen today. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. I just tell her, look, man. You know, I, I have no problem with her mom, man. Like, yeah. But I don't know how. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it, mm -hmm. she'll hear wind of this by her phone call eventually. Let me of course. Tell you something. So I don't know how That's to. Big news. And it's going to be all over the news. Every channel. <laughs> I mean. <that's... laughs> I mean, that's so the last thing I try to hide around here. Like now I'm gonna. Be I mean, do you yeah, I know, I hear you. You're right, yeah. Well, but, yeah. So, I mean, that's, um... I mean, I'm just trying to say it. I don't... I can't hurt what we're doing here by contacting my mother. Where does mom live? Literally, four Palm minutes County? away. No, four minutes up the street. Palm Beach County, so... Yeah. You tell the truth. That's, that's up to you. You tell it every You morning, know, I just... You know, look, this is what happened. I'm not going to argue it with you. She, and she's won't. Her mom doesn't do that shit. Yeah. yeah. But it, you know, and, and this is just a suggestion, man. I maybe mean, don't go. No, no, no. I mean, you know what? Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. You know, you're gonna have to talk to her. But like, this is a new beginning. You know, this right. is a girl that wasn't in your life less than a year ago, and and you. Guys, my last man, I, I, I tried to do so well and do all this shit right, so I can really move on, get all well, paper and all this shit. On this day on, and this broad just smashed me. Besides trying to kill me, on this day on. you know what I mean? <laughs> What's the best number to get a hold of you? Five six one uh -huh. three zero five uh -huh. eight five seven two. That's my only number. I'll give you um. Just God forbid, I'll give you my mom's number. Okay. You've been reborn. It's five six one uh -huh. seven zero three uh -huh. eight three three three. That's my mother. Her uh -huh. name's Karen. Sorry. But they're the only you know me and my mom. That's all I have here. So. Okay. You know. But I'm always home. Don't want to know now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm going to ask you later. I really, the, the part of someone actually trying to kill me isn't. It hasn't hit me. Oh, yeah. Well, um, well, well, let me get the keys for the car and then we'll go to the truck. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to just remain here.